This is a picture of my dad and I. Uh, I don't remember what year it was taken, but yep, that's me. Uh, this photo was taken at my old cabin in like Eastern Washington, right when I was to be baptized, right in that river. And here's a picture of my dad and I now, uh, like more recently, like 2020, uh, I think somewhere around there. I think it was r raining, whatever. Uh, you see the difference here, right? I mean, we've literally switched places, uh, except like I'm still short. Okay, uh, now just keep this image in mind while I continue my story real quick. I'm gonna switch gears here for a bit. Um, little did they know I'm never gonna come back to it. When I was a kid, I lived my life in complete naivety. Much like the feeling of when you put all of your attention on the TV show instead of focusing on your real life. You know, like uh, when you're binging a TV show and you forget that you're alive and begin to apply that false world to the world you're currently living in and uh, anxiety clouds your vision and everything around you is dull compared to the world you were once part of. That, uh, <clears throat> uh, that's what it's like. Uh, I'm sure I'm not like the only one to have experienced a uh, life like that, but either way, that's what my life was for however long it took for me to reach sixth grade. Around the same time, I'd hit that ripe age to start puberty. I don't know how old I was, maybe like 10 or 11. I, wow, geez, that doesn't sound right. But whatever, my parents got divorced. These two gunshots to the mind, you know, puberty, parents divorced, big mind shocker. Uh, were what woke me up from my naive brain state I'd previously been in. You could say that my blinks that followed occurred at about the same speed as my childhood had been. I'm a poet, by the way. Nothing in this bad had ever happened to me before. I'd never felt so alone and confused at the same time in my whole life. And uh, that's coming from the kid who used to walk around the soccer field humming during recess for fun. Uh, girls have been, and will always probably be, terrifying. If I hummed too loud for them to hear me, I'd be like, looked at or something crazy uh sorry uh anyways my life had been so peachy keen and whatever but then it was all in pieces and i didn't know what to do with myself god was very absent in my life it seemed i barely paid attention to his presence around me my middle school life was all i wanted to pay attention to fast forward to new year's eve of my eighth grade year I'm sure y'all have heard about my dad's sickness by now, but just to recap, this is where we first heard about it. My dad took my brother and I to his room and told us what had been going on. Apparently for the past eight years, at that time at least, um, we might be around a decade now in this slope. According to most ALS statistics, you're supposed to be dead after two years. So we can call this a blessing, but I guess I haven't seen how it's positively affecting my dad. And it might not be making him any better. It might just be God having another Job moment. He used to play the drums for the worship team at North Shore, for church. But recently he had to stop due to unforeseen medical problems. Though he struggles to say regular sentences, he still manages to force out, In Jesus' name, Amen every night before bed. His devotion to Christ has to be one of the most inspirational things I've ever seen. Okay, this is a fun detour, I think, and I'm not really sure uh, if it fits the bill here, but I digress. I'm on the autism spectrum, and I only just recently learned about this. Like, late 2019, I honestly get a sense that it's hindering my communication with God, because I'll be listening for a voice to tell me what I should do, but then I'll just get my own voice and I won't know who to trust. Then again, that might just be because I'm not in the word enough to really listen to him. I used to bully this one girl named uh, Abigail Lichty when I went to North Shore. She had uh, pretty bad Asperger's. Um, well, I guess not bad, but extreme. Everyone made fun of the way she liked My Little Pony and would try to imitate horses. She'd whinny and stuff and brought My Little Pony toys to school with her. 
I actually uh, helped some kids bury one of her toys in the murky gravel pit during recess. Little did I know that I was really just like her. The whole time I was helping everyone make fun of her when I could have been made fun of just the same. I had plenty of differentiations that could have been called out on and made fun of. I definitely feel like God lent me this diagnosis to try and deter my judgmental self away from who I once was. I still have many gripes on people today, but I have to understand how important it is to realize that we are all God's creation. We were all put here for a reason, whether it annoys me or not. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Genesis 3.1 I wanted to create a coherent timeline so that I wasn't hopping back and forth so much. But I'm not sure if I did a very good job at that. <laughs> um, next on the list is a girl. Scandalous, I know. I'm not sure if I'll say her name, but I'm sure some have already heard of her. We'll call her Georgia, like the state, so there isn't any confusion. I'll try to make this part short and sweet because it's kind of turning into a compilation the bad thing that happened to me. Um, Georgia kind of turned me away from God for a bit, though I'm not sure if I can really say it was her fault for that happening. I still prayed every night in hopes that our relationship would blossom like a spring's cherries. Uh, but that was kind of all there was between God and I. I wanted something so bad that I jumped at it without consulting my one and only counselor. But uh, long story short, it all ended up like a freight train hitting a Ford F-150 within the blink of an eye. God had sex for oh, wow sex. God had successfully removed a leech from my body, but I, for some reason, wanted that leech back. Almost like a masochist asking for a hot iron. It hurt to be that F-150 for a long time. And it still hurts. She was my first, and I thought she was a gift from God. But she was more of a jack-in-the-box, if anything. But I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. 2 Corinthians 11.3 Throughout my recovery, quote-unquote, or whatever you want to call it, I found it that I wasn't trusting God enough in my life. My heart yearned for him, but for some reason I couldn't make that final step. Trusting God through it all. There's something one of my good buddies told me once. If you can trust that some guy died on a cross for you some 2,000 years ago, then you should be able to trust the one who created you. This friend of mine, we'll call him Jacqueline, uh, yeah, uh, he had something pretty bad happen to him. His girlfriend of like two years had just left him, and he thought he'd lost everything. But it turned out that we were both in the same city in Oregon at the same time, so that was definitely God's doing. I tried my best to hear him and also let the Holy Spirit speak through me. I can't remember anything of what I said to him that day, but he still recognizes it as a peaking moment in our friendship. He said that, by God's will, I was there when he needed help the most. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Romans 8.26 I can't help but feel incredibly loved and supported right now. God actually used me. It was a real first one for me, truly. I, I still, like, as I was writing this, was realizing the magnitude of what God has done through me. Just this one friend, this one person, helping another friend, another person. Sob stories aside, this is my last will and testimony. So uh, first I'd like to give all of my belongings to the trash bin because we do not store up treasures on earth. Um, but seriously though, our lives are not meant to be tossed around and destroyed by whatever Satan shows to us. God gifted all of us our lives so that we might lead joyous lives worshiping him. He put you here because he thought this world needed one of you in it. When I look back on my life, I regret most of the things I've said and done because they didn't help anyone or make anyone feel good. Given I am dying, and this is my last written testimony, I will leave you with one thing. God does not care about your comfort. Your life is to be in his hands, even though he gave you free will. 
He wants your love, not your earthly safety. I guess this is more than one thing, but still, my argument stands. Finally, remember this. Bad things happen for a reason. I did not become who I am today without the trials I've faced. You have to dig some holes to grow some character. Like that one movie with Shia LaBeouf.